There were definitely some fights this weekend. There's definitely a fight with me versus the cold and my family's morale, which means it's time for Verbal Tap, the show that proves fighting way easier from outside of the cage, not outside of the very cozy heater. I'm your host, Kevin, with me, of course, Raph Esparza. Raph, giddy as all LeBron fans are, not about his performance. You had a lovely dinner. You had a great date, it sounds like. I did. I had a great beer interview, or as we call in the show, interbrew, and uh, with a very fun guest by the name of Chris Van Vliet, who is a huge interviewer in the world of professional wrestling, and oddly now in MMA as well. Physically th- huge or presence huge? Uh, not much bigger than me. Okay. So the but, tiny human being, but with a monster yeah, head, how close you know, to your side? Oh, no, I wish. In fact, <laughs> nowhere close as big of a broadcaster head as I have, despite the fact that he's quite good at broadcasting. But there was one thing about him that is very aggravating, which is the dude is jacked. He has been doing these go work out with professional wrestler or guests kind of videos And there's one where he just picked up two 100-pound weights and just started benching them. And I thought to myself, under no circumstances would I do that. That's terrible. Why are you doing that? And I asked him about it. He just goes, you know, man, when you're around these people, I think you just feel like you can do anything. And I said, I don't understand any part of what you just said, but I'm happy you did it. So, yeah, that interview is going to be coming out on Grappling Hour very soon. And uh, he's a wonderful human being. It was nice to actually roast him. And he used to be a backyard wrestler. So it was that era of when people would watch wrestling and then as kids would literally uh, powerbomb each other through uh, light tubes and stuff like that in their youth. And uh, he was telling me about that. And he created this alter ego named Chris Sharp. And I could not get over the fact that I looked at him and I said, you're Canadian. There's no way you can be a heel. Those things don't work together. (laughs) And uh, I asked him to try and cut a promo on me. And he struggled a little bit because he goes, I don't know what to do. And I was like, if you're a good heel, you can say shit about me. And uh, he was like, this is pretty hard. And then I immediately cut a heel promo on him. And he goes, oh, well, that wasn't hard. I'm like, I'm a bad person. I don't know how to tell you any differently. I've been judging you since before you walked in. <laughs> it's just and the hard part is, especially when you do comedy, because I asked him, I said, have you ever been booed before? And he goes, uh, no, oh, like jealous. Yeah. And I wow. told him, I go, hey, man, what do you mean? You, so you've never been booed because he's been in front of people. And I go, you've never had anybody boo you. And he goes, I don't. Why would they boo me? And I go, oh, so many reasons. Your, Jesus, your joke sucked. They're pretty wasted. They're still They're in a really mad still. about the Nats game that just ended. <laughs> so it was fun to hear uh, a very Some nice guy. Some guy named Tito so thinks I look weak and ineffectual <laughs> and has been screaming it from the bar. Two down. You're not funny. Expletive. <laughs> One of my favorite things is when we were doing early late night, there was somebody in the corner when I was about to tell a really funny joke and it got a good reaction and I was really excited to go back and see the video. And I actually just heard some dude as I hit the punchline go, this guy's not even funny. And I go, wait, you couldn't have waited for me to finish the line. You jumped the line before you said that you dick. I could at least say it afterwards. Now I can't even clip that. Fuck you, guy. And then it's always amazing to figure out, like, you paid to come see me. What the fuck? Why are you yelling? (laughs) And could you please stop? Yeah. It's all good out there in show business. Well, Raph, we have, speaking of open mic comedy, John Jones' latest arrest video, Mm. which comes in under five minutes. So it will qualify for most open mics. And I have I have a small hunch it's going to be pretty good. Where do we want to do this in the pantheon of there were fights? And frankly, I didn't have the chance to like sit down and soak them in because this is when the UFC is like, 
Yep, just when you all got done with the Olympics, mm -hmm. All Star Weekend, and our latest pay per view, guess what? Kyle Dacus and Jamie Pickett are going to have the choke of the podcast. So I did not get to watch. I did get to see Jim Miller mm -hmm. knocking the shit out of Nicholas Mata and thought again, my God, Jim Miller's still fighting. Yeah. And they keep giving him people who are new, like my buddy Eric Ghost Pepper Gonzalez fought him last, had a fun fight, but that was his first UFC fight. Then this weekend, he was fighting a person who had a very, um, I don't want to say low amount of fights, but I think the statistic they read out was uh, Nicholas Mata has 12 and 4 as a record. And they said it was one of the biggest disparities. And again, you compare that 12 and 4 to the record of, uh, I don't know, 34 and 16 and 1, which is Jim Miller's. So they said it was one of the biggest disparities between uh, fighters on a UFC card. You guys can correct me if I'm wrong, but still, dude who has 51 fights, it's a dude who has. Is that 16? It's a, it's a big differential. That's 35 goddamn fights. Kev, that's not even the big thing. Jim Miller, obviously, is still killing it. Especially against new prospects. This Dust dude. Do you know who I'm talking about? The Detroit dude? I don't. Thank God. Man, I'm so happy you became a dad and that you block some of this shit out. Is He's this the, the guy dude... that angers all the jujitsu crowd? <laughs> yes. It's... I've gotten the other way, I think, too, mm -hmm. about him. Oh, where it's no. like, what? At first, I was like, yeah, this is crazy. <laughs> and now he irritates so many people and makes so <laughs> many people feel self righteous that sure. I kind of enjoy what he's sparked, which is where it's like, hey, we're all better than him, right? At <sighs> jujitsu class, while well, they're just like sharing his shit at a level that's outstanding. But yeah, yeah. Okay, I I remember. I don't know his name. If you had said, you could have said thousands of names. It wasn't until you said he's the Detroit guy that I was like, oh, okay. Yes, the Detroit defense dude, dust dude. He was in the corner of a UFC, uh, UFC fighter over the weekend. And it was depressing because the fighter in question, who I believe is Joaquin Buckley, ended up winning a split decision. So the Detroit Dust guy got pulled into the octagon with a winning coaching record. Now, I told one of my friends over at Systems Training Center to tell Marcus who recorded a series of interviews with the dust guy and said, could you relay the following message? And he said, what's that? I go, can you tell Marcus that I said that the Detroit dust guy that he interviewed and took to task has a better winning percentage as a coach in the UFC than he does. <laughs> and he said, I don't think I, I go tell him exactly the way I said it and tell him it came from me. The internet didn't take long because just this weekend, I think, or in this past year, it seems like one of Khabib's guys lost for the first time. So they said in 2022, Khabib is 0-1 as a coach, but Detroit Dust Guy is 1-0. Kev, I just, I, I'm so mad at the internet. I'm so mad at them for making this guy a thing. I'm mad at people when they send me memes of this dude. I don't want them. And without fail, they still... Send it to me as if I want this. I do not. I cannot be more clear about it. And I know that people think we're being funny, but you are empowering this dude for not only more money that he can make, but even worse now, the fact that he's in the UFC, even as a gag, but has legitimacy as a coach, quote unquote. It's the worst, Kevin. I don't want him to be there. It's really bad. Well, we live in a place where credentials do not matter as much 
as your platform says. It. <laughs> so social media is important. I think Jake Paul was an influencer. Say la vie. Here we are. Deep in deep in the hellscape of <laughs> who's famous. It's really not that different than like the MTV era. Except it's much harder to find uh, DVDs of real world back then. That mm. said, anything else to call out from these fights, ref? Eh, not really. Okay, l- let me go over. There was an armbar. Uh, well, hold on. Yes, the armbar was great. Uh, Kyle Dacus getting uh, Darce. Uh, Parker Let's Porter. The podcast, I guess I took a little liberty there, but same <laughs> triangle choke by any other directional name. Darce. I, love uh, it. I didn't get a lot of those, ref. Parker Porter, which, by the way, is like a very weird version of Peter Parker. Uh, He picked up a decision win. But Jamal Hill defeating Johnny Walker is one of the knockouts that launched a million memes because Johnny Walker not only hit like against the cage where he looked all crumpled up and we were worried for a second, but I think he was okay. Um, They did some memes on that. And then the second part of it is uh, they caught him mid falling back where his hands were thrown up in the air and waving him around like they just didn't care sort of a deal. And I can't help but say that was pretty funny. So uh, good work to the internet for doing that. But other than that, Kev, let's put it this way. No fight of the night was awarded, but they gave out four performances of the night, which usually tells you, yeah, okay, we'll give some people some money, but maybe not a defining fight of the evening. We have checks to write, and so we might. Yep. Excellent. Do we want to start this uh, John Jones business? I could also um, I can look around, and see what we got news wise here on the sites, but I'll throw it to you. Yeah, there's a few things to maybe mention. You've got the John Jones thing queued up. Uh, Gordon Ryan is going to get a hundred thousand dollar Bitcoin sponsorship going into adcc Jeez, what yeah wow good for him absolutely and apparently good for the sport question mark if this is what does it raf how sad for both you and i that they're like hey we're finally ready to pay you guys um it's gonna be in bitcoin you and i like (sighs) shit (laughs) i'm gonna be like can i have stock in the crypto arena what's yeah, is Matt Damon coming over to explain to me what's happening? Before we go to the John Jones things, um, maybe I should ask you a question, Kevin. Should I be worried about my best friend, LeBron James, right now? You definitely should. If he's staying, Ugh. you definitely should. There's a lot of tea leaves. Things have gotten bizarre, and I think we'll see if your Lakers are able to turn it around, but he does that media thing. Mm-hmm. As great as anyone, where all of a sudden going into long All Star Weekend in Cleveland, Ohio, where LeBron, you know, famously was drafted and is from and is very famous in Akron, but close enough. It's Ohio. Who cares? <laughs> it's a safe state. He makes the comment about some other GMs, how smart they are, how upset he is. You guys didn't get John Wall put that one in his loss column. And Ugh. then. A little tour of that you can't rule it out when asked about returning to Cleveland and wanting to play with his son. I have no idea if his son's good. I assume he is. Yeah, you should be worried. <laughs> I think he's enjoyed his time in L.A. And here's the good news. I mean, he'll he'll always live there, so he'll get Space Jam 3, right? Mm. This is like the worst possible series. This Space Jam action, is so. like LeBron's career. He goes to the championship but does lose. It's a, it's a weird one. It's takes so low. I'm just happy for Sonequa. That's fine. Kev, <laughs> I had to have a moment where I told one of my friends. It was on the screen. They said LeBron may consider going back or doesn't rule out a return to the Cavs. And they go, Raph, what's your reaction? I go, you mean my former best friend, LeBron James? <laughs> and they go, yeah. And I go, I'm just preparing for it, dude. The other part that's yeah, a little you're weird. Bizarrely equipped, it seems like emotionally, almost. <laughs> I'm not, and I'm I'm not trying to throw any accusations, but it is yeah, it is almost like you weren't always in his camp. What? 
No. I know. It, I'm oh, not, my obviously, God. I'm not saying that. Wouldn't. Wouldn't encroach it. Don't want us to get into that same fight we got of to course. in, in and, 2017. Famously. Of course. I think and, everyone knows what I'm talking about. Yes, they do. Because you put it in the fucking episode name <laughs> of the show we did talk about him. And for years, people thought I hated LeBron erroneously until yeah. they could see oh my god he won a championship and raf loves him or he just moved to la and <laughs> there's further evidence on the show where i did a defense of space jam 2 you who did i would say those things i really dislike the movie space jam 2 most people did and guess premise. what Space Jam 1, still garbage, too, and yet people like that. Oh, that's so. right. That's where it was insane to me that, um, okay. Well, did you, I don't know if you, this is like uh, James Harden just went to the 76ers, and suddenly mm. they love him, you know? Yeah, of course like, they should. Dedicated to the game and his craft. <laughs> <laughs> I know, man. Hey, listen, we all occasionally just randomly leave for no reason. That's what happens. I know I've quit on some things. Diets, <laughs> think so. electrical devices. But the thing with LeBron that made me laugh is him saying that he wants to play with his son. And the quotation that he puts out. Fucking is, love it, by the way. It's not about money. Yeah, what we is know, your my to that, man. <laughs> Jesus, we are aware. We've known it wasn't the money since he had a McDonald's in his house. Like, Richie Rich. I know where you got it from. We all know where you got it from, idea-wise, LeBron. That was the best, 18, 19-year-old LeBron. And now, I mean, in addition to just being an effing genius, isn't mm. he like a billionaire athlete? Isn't he like the first? I don't know. These evaluations that they have for people when they say, Rihanna's a billionaire. And I go, is she? Well, we don't even, they're counting how many weddings are going to play Love the Way You Lie. Mm. Royalties in advance. (laughs) She's a billionaire. With LeBron, too, it is a little extra like he runs that agency. Runs, Mm. right? He has no part of it, according to him. Except his agent happens to become the main agent. For everything, you're telling me he has no future plans of joining to advise? Yeah. So the thing that I don't know is getting reported in this, because there are a lot of people who are getting caught up in the emotion of father and son. They're bypassing the whole, "Mm, it's not about money. Before I get to my point, I want to say when we get to season 28 of Verbal Tap, is there going to be a moment where you say, Raf, I'm not coming back to this show this next season unless my son is on this show, too? We'll see how he is on the mic. Okay. You mm-hmm. know, I mean, I, I get LeBron's like, I'm going to be 41 and just hanging out with him while he dunks on Sacramento. I'm still going to be talking as sharply as I ever have in theory. right? Yeah. I guess we'll see. What she better be. Do. Well, hey, let's you know, we'll put everything in in retrospect. We'll see how the drinking and the rage help form me over the next decade. <laughs> Seems, hey, it comes for white guys. I've seen a lot of evidence. We don't want to we don't want to rule out that I might need an exorcism of some kind. You'll know if my polo collection gets really expansive. Sure, but I'm just wor- worried about the moment when you go, "Hey, Raf, um, Seth little brony, <laughs> little brony Phillips." You better have a place on this show or else we're not doing it again. I'd be like, yeah, does he have the magic? Can he play in the pocket? I don't know, Raph. We just got to let him on. He's my kid. What's his pick and roll game like? (sighs) Hey, I want him to know what it's like to work for free. (laughs) So you mentioned, okay, work for free. Here's the part that I want to make sure that's pretty clear about this whole situation, which is it may not be about the money to LeBron. What about the Brony? Brony's the one sitting there going, I'm sorry, what? It's not about the money? He's just going to, well, I mean, it's Dazzle LeBron James. I get that, Kevin. But if you were to tell your son, who probably at that age wants to be his own man, or something. <laughs> he probably wants to feel like he oh. earned his own contract despite the fact that his dad is super mega star LeBron James. So if his dad's saying it's not about the money, his kid's probably sitting there being like, I don't know. Could it be a little bit about the money, at least for me? Could we stop, weigh our options? Is it maybe money related? 
Like, could you imagine if we make it so far into our run that I'm the one that just tells people, no, 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 it's not about the money. Kevin and I do this for the art. And we just turn down our Joe Rogan $200 million Spotify deal. And you go, Raph Cannon, people? Well, to follow your L.A. analogy, after you left me for four years for Spotify for a huge <laughs> salary, and then you come back, you're like, it was never about the money. It's like, excuse me? <laughs> yeah, after I know. Cancel me I've been for doing some progressive thoughts. Manscaping gonna... <laughs> ads, motherfucker, while you've been in Sweden getting massages and hand jobs. I don't know what they do. <laughs> you're going to be like, Raph, we noticed you had some very progressive views and we don't believe that here at Spotify. So we're going to have to censor you your tell episodes people to get the flu vaccine. Oh <laughs> That's a God. big trigger point for us, mm, you know, mm, because mm. of the perceived autism. It's like, excuse yep. me, I don't. Yeah, okay. We're going to have to ask you not to. We use so perceived going through the NBA thing. Um, I have two follow up questions here. Number one, can you describe to me what the purpose of the NBA 75 was? I cannot. I think it was to irritate a lot of people. <laughs> okay. They, you know, this. They redo the list every twenty-five years. They did it at fifty. Um, I guess they. I mean, I assume. I hope they do this in wrestling. But it's like their version of every twenty-five years, we're gonna shake it up a little, irritate people, sh- kick their asses off the list, add some new ones. It's uh, hilarious to me. It's just really hurtful. <laughs> There's just no reason for it, but yeah, I legitimately can't understand why anybody would agree to show up to be put in order, and like it's a line in fucking kindergarten. Except the line, the entire purpose is who's the most gifted. And the show you're talking about, the All Star Game, was mm-hmm. it was hosted by Machine Gun Kelly and DJ Khaled. You mm-hmm. shouldn't be subject to that. That's not a real show. <laughs> That was insane. DJ now, Khaled, by the way, we can we stop and have a quick please. shout out. The, yes, you sent me a video. I did not see this, thank God, because of uh, my internet blinders. <laughs> I guess for the same reason I didn't know who the... I already forgot his name. The guy from Detroit. It's already gone, Rap. Just so you know. The guy, I didn't even commit it to memory. You sent a video of DJ Khaled going through, and he really uh, crushed his halftime performance. I assume I wasn't watching the whole thing. Mm-hmm. It was. It wasn't quite what I was looking for when I got out of the Super Bowl. It's not his fault. My expectations were. It was me. He is doing the skills challenge, mm-hmm. and he gets through the free throw part, drops that teardrop, and then gives a really impassioned, out of breath speech about getting back up and never giving up. Mm-hmm. My question to you, Raf, is he aware he's not done with the skills challenge when he gives that speech, and there are two more obstacles to go, or do you just think he was feeling it? Mm. Like I'll knock those out later. Never give up, <laughs> except when I don't remember. I mean, except unless you don't to want to go hit a three and run your fat ass down down the court to try and hit a f- pretty lengthy layup. It's actually a pretty seasoned move, if you ask me. It's sort of like when you know you've got a laugh line, and you're performing stand up, and you do it, but you might also be hiding a cough. So you kind of like do that thing where you go, oh, yeah, Space Jam 2's in the news. <clears throat> laugh. Everybody laugh. Clear throat. <laughs> Man, who knew LeBron was so good in that movie? Am I right? Better than Michael Jordan. Wait for secondary laugh. Yeah, I, I think that's what he did is he essentially shot, didn't do great, took a moment, and another one. Inspiration. Yeah, I think you're. I think you've hit it directly on. It was like, how do I get out of the last two <laughs> obstacles? I know, I'll make it seem like I really feel like I did something, and people are going to be too sad to tell me, "Hey, DJ, excuse me, Mister DJ, mm-hmm. you you haven't completed the course. You you have given up, unless you're going to get running after you finish this Instagram post. This is amazing. It's just delightful. Those now, are things that come out All Star Weekend. Part two, Kevin. Would you say that people were having issues hitting slam dunks or that maybe some of the skills that you kind of alluded to that DJ Khaled opted out of? Maybe some of the athletes should have opted out of as well. I do think you're talking about the dunk contest. 
I'm talking about literally every people did highlight I saw stoned. from this weekend was of people hitting ultimate fails at the All Star Weekend. <laughs> there was uh, when they first started, it was like we're a little rusty. It's like you're a little hungover is what <laughs> they are. And I do know. Look, I'm not saying it's a coincidence. We'll find out when the UFC also is. Well, I think we did when they stopped uh, testing for weed. Suddenly, we've got this BAMP championship that The Rock is giving out. Life makes no sense, right? People are like, weed's yeah. legal. We can do whatever we want. That's a little bit what's happening with the NBA. Uh, there's no more testing in place. It's like, let's see. Chris Paul, wh- they announce he is injured. He has a hurt hand. He's been out for 12 weeks. He plays in the game. Yeah. He goes out and just takes reps. <laughs> no rules. And I do agree with you. It. I mean, the All Star Week has just become really fun, mostly. Yeah, and the seven footer won the three point challenge. Don't think makes sense. Who gives listen, a shit? Kudos to them. And there was a moment where AJ Moorhead, a friend of ours, and I were at the bar. He was looking at Usher Raymond, wearing a very sparkly jacket, and he goes, "That's a fucking good jacket." And I go, "Yeah." I go, "Do not sleep on Usher fucking Raymond." And he says, I would never sleep on him. I didn't sleep on him, Raph. And I said, don't sleep on it. And he's fucking amazing. And they did a full out shot. And he didn't realize that it was just more than a suit jacket. He goes, oh, it's a whole suit. Shit. I slept on Usher Raymond. And that's the kind of magic that you get at an all-star weekend. But Kev, I got to tell you, I think I like the epic fails more than I do the massively good slam dunks because I know what people are saying nobody wants to do it. And they're like, oh, these guys got to get their shit together. I laughed my ass off at every single low light video there was. <laughs> and added bonus, the reaction shots from everybody who knows they should be doing better, even better. I can't remember if it was – uh, if it was Magic Johnson, there was somebody who was leaving that when they looked at the terribleness of the slam dunk contest, they go, yeah, I've had enough. I'm getting out of here. It was spectacular. Then they had reaction shots from Shaq. I don't even need to see Michael Jordan's. I know what it looks like. Just everybody tuning out. And I said, this is compelling to me. This is way better than anything from the Olympics. I want to watch people be disappointed because I think that gets better ratings. I think people would probably be more into that than actually saying like, oh, did this dude jump over a car again? Yay. (laughs) Haven't seen that one. There's a lot of ideas about how to spruce up the dunk contest. And I agree with a lot of them. There's uh, good ways... I think we've just cycled through the maximum amount of dunks and probably 20 years ago. And that's before YouTube really stole its thunder. There was a whole show dedicated to dunking for a while that no one watched, but we saw the highlights. That's the, that's the dangers. It is the dangers. Kev with that, I've exhausted my NBA material for the year. So Damn, it was fun. Thanks, yeah. though. Oh, You're welcome. I got for just a second. I was like, I'm really having fun. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Goodbye. Because okay. we're not talking about an injured Darius or mm-hmm. Borg versus Bandejas mm-hmm. or the many fights that are to come. We're talking a little NBA stuff that's happening and prevalent and yes. run by people that aren't wildly corrupt and abusive to their employees and staff. Are mm. you ready to see some people be employee abusive? We're going to describe what's happening in the John Jones arrest video. For those of you listening, you're going to enjoy it. Raph, are you ready to hit play? I am. You give me a countdown and I'll hit it. Yep, I'll hit three, two, one, play. And when I say play, we both click. I almost did it, but okay, go. Three, two, one, play. Play. Okay. Following warning video includes graphic. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I love these. We're in a cops episode already at the Mirage. It looks like Reno nine one one every time. Every time. <laughs> How do you think they choose whose video to use? Uh, it's a good question, but I love the upside down uh, date and uh, description yeah. on this thing. What's also great. I haven't is, figured that out in technology yet. Uh, which is strange. Yeah. 
But it's also great to see the looky loos that are around because there is just one dude who goes like, hey, what's going on here? I think I recognize. Is that John Jones? Oh, it probably is. I'm going to stick around and see this one through. How many cops would you say conservatively? Oh, we've John's has been over. We finally have a shot of John. Yep. He is crystal clearly bent over the top of a cop car. He looks comfy. He's aware. And He's been here before. There's no more prominent way to say you were outside of the Mirage. No. I fa- Actually, I practically feel like I'm in the Mirage <laughs> about to get brunch. John Jones appears agitated, and mm-hmm. there are now one, two, three, four cops, one of them looking a lot like Moby with hair. Yeah. The hard part about this to me is we don't have audio, but we can almost guarantee that John Jones is lecturing the cops. He's definitely talking to shit. He's like, you think you know who I am? (laughs) I'm John Jones. I'm a peak. They're all, they all just like rushed him. So whatever Mm -hmm. he just said was agitative. (laughs) Whatever he just said really upset them. The other thing I'm thinking about as I'm looking at this. Can you let these cuffs looser? They're trying to loosen the cuffs. He's got haired Moby helping him get the cuffs. (laughs) The other thing I'm thinking about as I'm watching this is he's making the case to all of these people why he's better than GSP on the all-time goat list. <laughs> he, at this moment, is like, I'll destroy Francis Ngannou. Put him in front of me. Would that get me out of these charges? And they're like, what? It's like, I'm sorry. I'm on a lot of cocaine. I have no fucking clue where I am or what's going on. He's doing the John Jones pleading voice. What did mm-hmm. I do? Tell me what I did. He's doing that yeah. thing where he's screaming at the cops. I can see he's screaming based off of just general body language. Mm. The cops, there are 30 of them. Can I point out a lot of cops. one of the descriptive Look at that guy. The cop in the background is like, they, they wouldn't let me in the inner circle, but I knew the perimeters. <laughs> One of the descriptive uh, sentences that leads into this video says, we caution viewers that this video. Oh, buddy hop. John Jones is jumping up and down. John Jones is getting loose. Oh, they're upset. They put him back over. They were like, get back in the entry prison position. You know what I'm talking about. (laughs) Buddy hop was not something. The buddy hop was not in my bingo card. (laughs) He was going to start bunny hopping. I would not. I would have given you good Vegas odds if you were like, Kevin. Everybody starts bunny hopping. Oh, like, no oh, fucking way. Oh. Oh. oh just ooh. slam the head on the car. God damn, dude. Actually, I think a lot of people he's fought can relate to what just happened there. He is a head butter, notoriously. So, again, we're watching. I don't oh, have audio on my side. They've put him into the car wrap. If this were yeah. a cops episode, they're about to cut to commercial. Things have heated up. I've eaten at that McDonald's several times. Behind I'm sorry. I have, too. Yeah. Um, okay. The precursory sentence was we caution viewers that this video is very sensitive in nature and i will tell you we did read the description of what happened i just hadn't seen the video until you sent it to me uh, tonight it is pretty accurate to the way that i read it (laughs) and the fact that it is hauntingly accurate is what makes it sad now again we don't have the audio there are actually be sadder to hear the audio with it (laughs) there are there are so many cops trapped. That's how I want to get arrested. If these I get poor, arrested next. These poor looky lose. At least they're in for the long haul. They didn't just leave. They just got him in the car. It yeah. took three of them because he's being so church like and compliant. I guess those that's how he gets the, the deacons greet him that way at his church. They're like, Oh, Mr. Jones is here. Let's go stuff him into the car until he's done with the ceremony. <sighs> then we'll let him out and he can drive his family home and that's what he calls church. I think there's one cop, the one with the kind of shaved head-ish, that just put his hands on the hood and goes, oh, fuck. fuck my life. Yeah, he definitely, the cops are not excited they arrested no. John Jones in the slightest. They all look just like, ah, oh, we're going to be online for this, aren't we? Yeah, because they also know bitch. it's Dana White's town. So Video like, is oh. over. Yeah, they're never going to get to be sheriff. Not now. <laughs> not with that attitude. You just know that you're going to get a call from the bald father being like, why the fuck did you guys arrest John Jones? I don't care what he did. He if, didn't. If you're curious, that moment where Raph and I gasp as he starts attacking the police car, he yeah. caused almost $1,000 worth of damage with his face. So I can't, you know this, Raph, like the accountability factor is so amazing with him. 
Never yeah. once after he wins or when things are going well or never once would he even really entertain the question. But it's like you you quote Jesus a lot for someone that's caused a thousand dollars worth of damage with his forehead to a police car while incarcerated. Well, I'm glad you brought that up. I just believe in God so much that I wanted to show it through the power of what I could do to the fucking cruiser's hood. It is insane. He's I he is as shocking to me that he's Mm -hmm. arrested again is as shocking to me as that we have not proven he's committed murder yet. It's crazy. Yeah. I don't have that confidence to be like, good. There's 30 cops. Fuck your hood. Fuck it. (laughs) Fuck it. I don't know, man. Hitting your head on the hood is it's pretty intense. You know, what also is intense the Las Vegas Review Journal, in their suggested videos, if you just let it play all the way through, says, "Hey, if you like that, go check out uh, classic fight highlights of Jones versus Gus Gus One." Ooh, like think about that. You make it through this video and you think, "Man, you it's imagine a rough being one. one of the cops though when he hit the hood <laughs> and being like, well, I shit myself. Good, <laughs> yeah, no, let's get him in. He's not calm.'" <laughs> He is on cocaine. He is agitated, and he's very strong. <laughs> it's, it is. You, it just scares him when they crowd him. It's but great. it's also at this point, is it inhumane to blow dart him? Is that <laughs> not a thing we do? Can you imagine anyone that would encourage it more? I'm sure they're like, well, what do we have that's going to take him down? They're like ketamine. He's like, took three shots before I left. It's like, well, okay, <laughs> wait, did that knock you out? It's like, made me mad. It's like, okay, what do, what do we give him? And they're like, we don't have anything that won't statistically kill him. He's like, give me that times two. It's a tough mm-hmm. conversation with an addict, you know. So I think they probably just ultimately resided we can't. But there is no one in the world that would rather get a high-octane rhino trank to the neck mm-hmm. than John Jones. <clears throat> He'd wake up six hours later happy with an erection, just as <laughs> ready to take on the day. It's good fight prep, bro. Honestly, it's probably part of his new team's camp. It's probably uh, how they kept him successful for all those years. Jackson Wigglefair is like, we won't tell you, but yeah, we were crushing up rhino ketamine and putting it in your drinks. We just found it to be a more pleasant version of you. Not less violent, mm-hmm. just more pleasant. I see what you're doing here. It's a very similar uh, sort of uh, thing that Professor X did where you would block the memories of Jean Grey because she was too powerful. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you just kind of put those psychic blocks around them. Bald and it's like, coaches. I did it for your own good. Yeah. Those bald coaches know what to do. They figure Absolutely. it out. That's fascinating. That's, I don't know if I'm happy it's or sad fact. you made me watch that. It's just a theory. I'm, I'm so happy we watched that because of the bunny hopping. <laughs> the bunny hopping will You're remain. Fair. We will be able to make each other happy by just bunny hopping. <laughs> It's just that there's a lot of things that you can expect, and I can pretty safely say I don't remember in any police reports that I read anywhere in it that it said bunny hops towards the direction of one of the officers. There is that. Yeah, if anything else, between that and DJ Khaled, high marks this weekend. High marks. The DJ Khaled video, I I laughed for 21 minutes. <laughs> that was just starting. Because as he finished, I was like, well, was that the whole video? And I couldn't tell if you were like, I relate to this so hard. Because, you know, ostensibly, so did I. I was like, yeah. yeah, I'd be out of shape and try to hit that jumper too. But when he stopped and just gave it an heartened, <laughs> heartened speech, I was like, that's how I want to start living my life. Just but like, haven't oh, you I ever... can't finish this. Follow your dreams. Have you ever messed something up and then immediately went to cover it because you were just so shamefully embarrassed? Thousands of times. Twice tonight, probably. Yeah. Right. But we've never gone viral for that shit. Not yet. No. Damn That was a drop in the bucket for that man. That was like a regular day that ends in Y. So I guess it's powerful stuff. Machine Gun Kelly was way too prominent. But yeah. Oof. We... uh, I half expected him to show up in this Vegas video with John Jones just in the background. It's like, as my man MGK. He's like, I don't know him. Oh, God. <laughs> just snorting. There's, you know, I don't know their circles. Raph, what else do we want to hit before we send people back into 
your sunny fire laid state or my tundra frozen version um oh god see the ice falling right now oh yeah i so here's the thing i saw the quotation mark of uh something that john jones said it says john jones headbutting police car telling officers hurt me and kill me hmm so I know, <laughs> I'm glad that we looked, can put that context in for people. He did look happy bent over. That's a kinky thing to say. Oh my god, kid. Uh, maybe it is better we didn't see that shit with audio because <laughs> yeah. What else did eek. he say? He was like, "Strap leather on and wh- <laughs> it, do it. Hit me, shoot me, tase me. <laughs> put me, put the drugs in." It's like what? Okay, we might have Ugh. to rewatch that now <laughs> with the audio. And get back to people and be like, we're so sorry for the last six minutes of content. This hey, listen, at the very least, we put our own disclaimer that's no different than the disclaimer that the Las Vegas Review and Journal put up, which is, we caution viewers, this video is very sensitive in nature. You know what? Put that in the lead description of this week's episode, Kev, because that way we cover our bases. It's very sensitive in nature. Yep. we Will do. Um, no, there's not a ton else happening. Uh, you get basically Joanna Zizek saying that uh, maybe she can be their version of Conor McGregor for the ladies. Era Hawani has over 100,000 subscribers. Oh. Yeah, that just happened over the weekend. It was the Bill Simmons uh, appearance. He came in throwing fastballs. Was it good? Yeah. Oh, good for great. him, man. He was great. Um, that's about it. There's nothing super crazy about anything other than, yeah, there is a UFC this weekend. Um, well, can I tell you what you're going to be hearing for the next two weeks? Please go right ahead. I know all Jorge Masvidal stories, which means Raph and I will be keeping you updated on what that stupid king belt costs in the very near future. They might raise the price. I don't know. I feel... Perhaps one of the enduring legacies of this show will be our commitment to that belt. <laughs> I've told so many people about the work that we do and the amount of time we've spent on this show dedicating to small little paper cuts of, did you know how much it still costs? And the fact that it hasn't changed in price. Incredible. Even up or down. Let's put it that way. Up or down because of inflation. That thing now has become the Costco hot dog of the UFC, we'll where chatting. the where the CEO of Costco. This is all a myth, by the way. I can't prove it, but it is reported that the CEO of Costco, when asked about the possibility of raising the cost of the hot dog, said, oh, "For my dead body." <laughs> and I don't care to fact check that at all. I just say that just that goes to, to what I want it to believe. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Fuck you guys. We're good. And I'm definitely on your side. More more importantly that this stupid belt. I also now have this like small image in my head of them putting tiny belts around the hot dog, being like, it's bam. <laughs> Well, that hot be the dog's a thousand dollars. You're welcome. <laughs> I'll do it for us tonight here at Verbal Tap. I am Kevin. Thanks for listening. Good night and good fight. The number you have dialed has been changed. The new number is... Please note, the new number is...